Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My ultimate performance and tuning guide coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. In today's video, we will go over my ultimate performance and tuning guide for Microsoft Flight Simulator. This will be a compilation of all the things that I've picked up over the past couple years to get the best performance out of Microsoft Flight Sim. This guide will consist of 23 steps, all of which we will be going over in today's video. However, I will be moving somewhat quickly to help maximize the amount of information in a shorter period of time. I have done more detailed videos on the individual topics. I will list all of those down below in the description. If you have any comments or questions throughout today's video, post it down below in the comments section and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoyed today's content, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Before we jump into the video, I just have one disclaimer. Please keep in mind that everyone's system is different and what may work on my system may not work for you. So the one thing that I do recommend for everyone is that you try everything. You never know what's gonna work on your system. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is run through two system maintenance items, and then we're gonna do a system restore point. So let's go over that. The first thing we need to do is to go down to your search, and then we're gonna type in command. Once we do, at the very top, you will see the command prompt. We're gonna right click and then click run as administrator. Once that is done, you will see C colon windows backslash system 32. If you do not see that, make sure to go back and run as administrator. Once we're here, we're going to copy and paste the commands that I have down below in the description. This is gonna be a DISM online cleanup. This will help clean up any system files. If you would like more detailed information about the DISM, as well as the scan now command that we're going to run next, check out the link down below in the description, or you can click up here. You want to make sure that you run this through its entirety. Do not click off of the actual window. If you do, you may notice that the percentage will stop. Make sure to click back on the window again and hit enter, and then it should resume. So it's very important that you just let it run through before you do anything else on your PC. The reason why we are running these two cleanup items first before we do the system restore is that if you do need to revert back to a system restore, you don't want to revert back to any corrupt system files. All right, now that that is done, we're going to run the scan now command. Again, link is down in the description, copy and paste. Same as before, we're going to allow this to complete in its entirety. Do not click off of the screen. Just let it finish. Okay, the scan has been complete. We can now close out of the command prompt. At this point, we're going to create a system restore point if for some reason we need to revert back from any of our settings. To do that, we'll head down to the search and we will type in restore. At the very top, you will see create system restore point. We'll left click there. Once we're here, we can click on the local disk drive and then click on configure. Make sure that you turn on your system protection if it is disabled. And then at the very bottom, we're going to go ahead and set this to about 5%. Click apply, hit OK, and now we can click on create system restore. Give it a name, I'll give it today's date, and then we'll hit create. All right, so now that that is complete, we can close out of that, click OK. All right, so now we can move into some of our Windows tweaks. To do that, we'll head down to the Windows icon and then move to the settings. Once you're in the settings menu, click on the Gamings tab. If you're a user that does not use the Xbox Game Bar to record clips, chatting with friends, or receiving game invites, then I would highly suggest to come in and turn off the Xbox Game Bar. Once you have done that, we're going to head down to the Game Mode. Now, this particular setting has been a little bit controversial in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I prefer to keep the game mode off in Microsoft Flight Sim. Again, I would recommend to try this on and off to get the best setting for your PC. 
Once you're done here, we're going to head all the way over to the right hand side to graphics settings. Once you're in the graphics settings, we have a couple things in here to adjust. The first setting we have at the top is hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, also known as HAGS. So who should or should not use this? Well, again, I recommend to try everything, but in my experience, turning HAGS on really introduced a bunch of stutters into the sim. However, if you are a 4000 series GPU user and want to take advantage of frame generation, then you must keep HAGS mode turned on. Below we have Graphic Performance Preference. In the list you will see Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you do not have that in your list, then you can select Desktop App or Microsoft Store App, select Browse, and then choose Microsoft Flight Simulator from the list. Once you have that here below, we can select, select Options, and then we're going to select High Performance and then Save. Once we're done here, we can then click back on the home. The next thing you want to do is click on Apps menu. Once we're here, we're going to go down to Startup, and this will bring up all of these startup applications for our PC. You want to make sure you go through all of these and turn off anything that you do not need to start up with your PC. This will help minimize any background applications that are running and thus improving the system latency. Once we're done here, we can close out of this window. The next thing we're going to do is take a look at any background applications. To do that, we're going to head down to the search and just start typing in background. Once you do, at the very top, you'll see background apps. Go ahead and left click there. This will bring up all the allowed background applications. Now we can either turn off all of the background applications or we can just go through and select the ones that we want to allow to run in the background. So for this, there's only two that I select in the menu, and that would be Microsoft Flight Simulator and the NVIDIA. Once you're done going through all of your background applications, then we can close out of this menu as well. Next, we're going to adjust our virtual memory for our system. To do that, we're going to head down to the search bar again, and we're going to type in performance. At the very top, you will see adjust the appearance and performance of Windows. We're going to give that a left click. Once you have the performance options open, the visual effects tab will be the first thing that will be open. Most likely, if you have never messed with this, all of these checkboxes will be checked. But I found that if you select custom and uncheck a bunch of these and only check the ones that I have here, will aid in better performance in Windows without reducing any quality. Once you have gone through these, then we're going to select on the advanced tab at the very top. Once here, we're going to choose programs for the best performance. Below that, we have virtual memory. Here, we're going to select change. If you have never messed with your virtual memory, yours will most likely be checked with automatically. You want to uncheck automatically manage paging file size. Then you want to select the drive, whichever your operating system is located. Once you have done that, you want to select custom size below. Now, the initial size and the maximum size is all going to be based upon how much RAM your system has. So we'll go through the three most popular size of RAM, 16, 32, and 64. There is a formula for figuring this information out. The formula will read 1.5 times 16,000 megabytes. That will equal 24,000 megabytes. That is what you would put in your initial size. 24,000. In the maximum size, the formula reads three times your RAM size. So three times 16,000 would equal 48,000 is what you would put in your maximum size. For 32 gigs of RAM, you would put 48,000 in the initial and 96,000 in the maximum. For 64 gigs of RAM, you would use 96,000 in your minimum and 192,000 in your maximum. Once you have set your custom size, then we can hit the set button and then hit OK. If the apply is lit up, we can hit apply and then OK. Your system may ask you to restart. At this point, you can go ahead and restart your system. Once you're done with that, now we're going to adjust our power setting. To do that, we're going to head down to the search bar and we're going to type in power. 
Once you have done that, you will see power and sleep setting at the very top, left click there. Once we're here, go all the way to the right hand side to additional power settings. This will open up a new window with all of the power settings that are available on your PC. For this, I would recommend to either select Ultimate, Performance, or High Performance setting. Once you do that, then we're going to head over to Change Plan Settings. Then we're going to go down to Change Advanced Power Settings. Okay, so now that we're in the Advanced Settings, verify that you're using either Ultimate Performance or High Performance. Then we're going to go down to Hard Disk. Make sure you set this to Never. Next, Internet Explorer Mode. We're going to set this to Maximum Performance. We're going to head down to Wireless Adapter Settings. Go down to Maximum Performance. In the USB settings, you want to set this to Disabled. In PCIe Express, set this to Off. Processor Power Management, Minimum Processor State, 100. And Maximum Processor State, 100. Once you're done here, we can click on Apply. Click OK. All right, so we're finished with the advanced power settings. We can go ahead and close out of this menu. All right, the next tweak is going to be in Google Chrome. If you are not a Google Chrome user, you can skip to the next step. First thing we need to do is ahead to the upper right hand corner, click on the three dots. Then we're going to go down to settings. Once we're in the settings menu, scroll all the way down on the left hand side down to system. At the very top, you will see continue running background apps when Google Chrome is closed. You want to make sure that you untick this because we do not want any Google Chrome background applications running once we close Google Chrome. Once we're done with that, we can close out of Google Chrome. All right, the next thing I want to go over is the ISLC or the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. Now for this, I've done a more detailed and in-depth video so if you are someone that has never used this, please check out the video in the description or you can click up here. I'm only briefly going to go through the application. And what the application will do is it will help purge any standby memory that may build up in the system. So if you're on a two or three hour long flight, this will greatly improve your performance over the long haul. So let me go through the application and I'll show you how this is set up. Once open, we have a couple boxes over on the left hand side. Our minimum size that we're going to set here is 1024. Below that is going to be the free memory. You're going to set this to whatever half your system RAM size is. Now because I have 32 gigs of RAM, we're going to set this to 16,000 megabytes. Below we have a couple checkboxes. We're going to check to start the ISLC minimized and auto start monitoring. We're also going to check the launch ISLC on user logon. On the right hand side, we also have the ability to change our current timer resolution. This will also improve our system latency. To do that, we're going to go down to wanted timer resolution and we're going to set 0.5 in the box below. Once you have done that, we're going to check enable custom timer resolution. And if you're a Windows 11 user, you will then also tick Use Global Timer Resolution Request. At the very bottom is the ISLC polling rate. If you have a mid to lower end PC, set this to 1000. If you have a mid to upper end PC, set this to 500. This will just be how often the application will check. Once we're done there, you can also hit the Purge Standby list. This is not mandatory, but this will purge any memory in the standby. And then we can hit start on the application and this will start the application doing its job. Once we do that, you will see the current timer resolution change and it will now start to monitor the standby list memory. If this is your first time using the application, once you hit start for the first time, you want to make sure that you minimize the application once this is done. Then every time you open Windows now, it will automatically start the application and it will run the application as well. The application will then reside down in your task manager here where you can double click and you'll see it pop up. Never exit out of the application or it will close it. 
The next thing we'll go over is how to run Microsoft Flight Simulator in high priority mode. This will also help reduce or minimize the amount of stutters you may experience in the sim. Now there are two ways in which you can do this. One is very simple, which can be done in add-on linker. The other way, which can be done on any application or program, I will post a link down below in the description. I've done a more in-depth and detailed tutorial about this subject. To run Microsoft Flight Sim in high priority mode using add-on linker, click on the settings cog, click on force high priority, click OK, and that's pretty much it. Now, when you run Microsoft Flight Simulator using the play button, it will automatically launch the simulator in high priority mode. The next application we're gonna go over today is Pegasun System Utilities. This tool has a bunch of great features, but for today, we're only gonna be using it for one thing and one thing only, and that is to help clean up any background services that we do not need running on our PC. This will greatly reduce the latency on your PC. For this, links will also be down below in the description. This is a free application. Once you're on the Pegasun website, we're gonna click on product and services, and then go down to system utilities. Once you're here, you're gonna scroll all the way to the very bottom, and then we can download either the installer or the portable zip for your PC. I recommend the portable zip because I don't really want to install any of this on my PC. I just want to take advantage of the software. Now what you will have on your desktop is a system folder that you can just open up the utility application right from here. Once you have the application open, we're going to head over to the toolbox and then we're going to go down to service manager. Once you're in the service manager, we have a couple options at the very top of the screen. Default, safe, and maximum. I found no issues by setting this to maximum and then clicking optimize. If you wish to revert back to default, then you can just set default and then hit optimize. So let me show you how this will work. I'll select maximum, optimize, then it will bring up a list of services that it will optimize on your system. Now, because I've already done this, yours will probably have a bunch of different services here. To the right hand side, you will see how it is currently listed and you will see the new setting for this. If there is anything in here that you do not want to turn off, now's when you would want to uncheck the box. Once you have done that, we can hit optimize. Then we can hit close. Once you reboot your system, it will now run with the optimized settings that we have set here below. And if you scroll through the list of background services, you can see just how many there are. So this should free up a bunch of CPU resources for you in Microsoft Flight Sim. Once you're done here, we can close that out. If you are gonna dabble around in here, just be careful on what you click on. I have had people click on the wrong thing and really mess things up on their PC. So that's why the only thing I recommend is the service manager portion. Next up is the NVIDIA control panel settings. Now before we get into the NVIDIA control panel settings, I would also highly recommend to delete any shader cache that you might have on your system. Now if you're unaware of how to delete your NVIDIA shader cache, I've done a more detailed and in-depth video down below in the description. Deleting your NVIDIA shader cache should be done anytime there's an update to the sim or if you've updated any scenery in the simulator. Once you have done that, now let's move into the NVIDIA control panel settings. For this, we're gonna go ahead and select adjust image settings with preview and select use the advanced 3D image settings. Once we're done, we're gonna head over to Manage 3D Settings. In Manage 3D Settings, at the very top, we have two tabs. Select the Global Settings tab, and you're gonna scroll all the way down to Shader Cache Size. Select 10 gigabytes from the dropdown, and then hit Apply. This is gonna be the only setting that we're gonna adjust in the Global Settings. Next, we're gonna head over to Program Settings. 
In Program Settings, we're going to select Microsoft Flight Simulator from the drop-down. If you do not have Microsoft Flight Simulator in your drop-down, run Microsoft Flight Simulator, then click on Add. Once you click the Add button, it will show all of our recently used applications. Microsoft Flight Simulator should populate as you have just ran the application. Highlight, select Add Selected Program, and then it should pop up in the drop-down. Once you have done that, now we can go through all the individual settings here below. Again, I'm going to run through all of these very quickly as I've done a more in-depth and detailed tutorial. Links will be down below in the description. First, we're going to set image scaling to off. Anisotropic filtering, I'm going to set this to 16x. In the simulator, we're going to turn anisotropic filtering off. Anti-aliasing FXAA, we're going to set this to off. Gamma correction is set to on. Anti-aliasing mode, we're going to leave this as application controlled. Anti-aliasing transparency, off. Background application max frame rate, off. CUDA GPUs, we're going to set that to all. Next is CUDA system fallback policy. I leave this on driver default. Low latency mode, I have set to off. Max frame rate, set to off. Open GL GDI compatibility, set to prefer performance. Open GL rendering, set to your graphics card. Power management mode, this one is personal preference. I prefer to set this to maximum performance. For some users, it seems to overheat their GPU and they prefer to run on normal. The option to this would be to use an application like MSI Afterburner, and then you can set up a custom fan curve for your GPU. Preferred refresh rate, I have on application controlled. Texture filtering is off. Texture filtering negative LOD bias, I have set to clamp. Texture filtering quality, I have set to high quality. Now, I've been testing with this, and that's why I have this set on high quality. You may prefer quality or performance. Honestly, I don't really see much of a change other than when you do switch this setting, it will switch your texture filtering options. Texture filtering trilinear optimization, I have set to on. Threaded optimization is auto. Triple buffering is off. Vertical sync, I have set to use application settings. Now, for those of you who are having screen tearing issues, I would first recommend to set this to Vertical Sync Use 3D Application Settings, and then turn on the VSync in Microsoft Flight Simulator to either half refresh or 100%. That seems to get rid of most of any tearing if you have any. If for some reason that does not remove any of your tearing, then go in Vertical Sync here, tick on the drop down, and check Fast. Virtual Reality pre rendered frames, I have set to 1. Now, for VR users, this setting again is another controversial setting. I have tried everything over 1, and it seems to worsen my performance. So, I would recommend to try all the different options that you have available and then choose the one that's going to give you the best performance. At the very bottom, Vulkan OpenGL present method, and we have this set to auto. Once you're done setting all of your settings, we can hit apply at the very bottom. Okay, the next application I would like to go over is the DLSS Swapper application. Links for this application will be down below in the description, as well as a more detailed video that I've done on this. Links will also be down below in the description. The DLSS Swapper tool allows us to replace a DLSS DLL file in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is very important because Microsoft Flight Simulator does not update to the latest DLL files that are available. Because of that, we're missing out on all the latest and greatest performance updates that we could be utilizing in Microsoft Flight Simulator. To update the DLL file, we will head over to the Library tab, select the latest DLL file, and then you will see the Download button. Click on the Download button. Once you have downloaded the file, we can head back over to our games list. Click on the game you want to update the DLL file for, and this will also list all of your other games too that you're able to do this for. 
select the DLL file, and then hit swap. This will automatically swap the DLL file and you will see that populate in the lower right hand corner of the game tab. If you want to revert back to default, just hit reset and you will see what Microsoft Flight Simulator is using as far as the version. Once you're done with that, we can then exit out of the application, but I would check periodically to see if there's any new updates to the file. Next up on the list, we're going to go over some more advanced tweaks for your system and for Microsoft Flight Simulator. The first thing that we're going to go over is the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. This is like an NVIDIA control panel on steroids. For this, I've done a more detailed and in-depth tutorial on this application. If you are someone that has never seen that application, then I would definitely recommend to check that out. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is select Microsoft Flight Simulator in the profile at the very top. Now that we have done this, anything that we adjust below is only going to be applied to Microsoft Flight Simulator. The first menu I wanna go over is a DLSS menu. If you're a user that does not use DLSS, this menu is not gonna to pertain to you. But if you do use DLSS, this will allow us to choose a preset for DLSS. These are presets to help improve various aspects of DLSS, like ghosting and things like that. The latest preset that's available is preset E, and that's the one I'm using. It seems to give me the best performance. We also have the option to force a scaling ratio and this will force a scaling ratio in any DLSS option that you choose in the simulator. Inside a Microsoft Flight Simulator, it will override every DLSS setting, whether it be quality, balanced, ultra performance, it doesn't matter, whatever you set here will override that. But we have a couple more options in here than we don't have in Microsoft Flight Sim. So if you wanna have a clear image using DLSS, we can upscale that a little bit more than we have available to us in Microsoft Flight Simulator by using the ultra quality setting or anything higher than that. The only other thing that may help your performance in Microsoft Flight Simulator here would be to go down and turn on your rebar settings. Again, I've gone over this in detail in that other video that I've posted in the description. Go ahead and check that out because there's some other things that you need to do to turn on rebar other than setting these settings here in the profile inspector. The other settings that I go over in that other video don't really give you that much performance, so you could skip over that if you wish. So once you've made all your changes in here, make sure you go up to apply changes, and then we can exit out of the profile inspector. The next setting tweak that can help your performance in Microsoft Flight Simulator is to run your PC in XMP mode. XMP mode will allow your RAM to be run at a higher speed if it has the capability to do so. Not all RAM has this capability, but you wanna make sure that you go into your BIOS and check that your RAM is set to XMP mode. I've done a more detailed and in-depth tutorial in the description on various motherboards because there is some differences, especially if you're using Intel or AMD. The last advanced tweak that I would like to go over is deep loading your NVIDIA driver. What this will do is remove all of the unnecessary junk that's installed on the NVIDIA driver. Now that will also include GeForce Experience and anything that goes along with it, like NVIDIA filters, overlays, and things like that. So if you do use any of those items, then you probably don't want to debloat your NVIDIA driver. But if you're someone who does not use NVIDIA filters or screen sharing or anything like that, or shadow play, then it may be in your best interest to try it out. All right, so now that we have gone through all of our system tweaks, now we need to adjust all of our in-sim graphics settings for Microsoft Flight Simulator. For this, I've already done an in-depth tutorial video about that that I will post in the description. In this video, I show you how to use the InSim FPS counter as well as the latency monitor that's built in to help dial in your settings to get a perfect balance 
of CPU and GPU latency. Once you have finished with that, then we can go into two more applications that can greatly help the performance in the simulator. The first application I want to go over is Auto FPS. This is a free application that can be used to help adjust the level of detail in the simulator to help maintain a more stable frame rate. This will help reduce stutters and should help aid in a more smooth gameplay. There's a couple different applications that can be used with this and I've also done an in-depth tutorial on all three applications that I know of. I'll also post a link down below in the description for that. The last application that I want to go over today is the lossless scaling application. This is the only application of everything that I've gone over today that does cost some money, which is only about five or six dollars. Now I've done another in-depth full video tutorial guide on this. I will post links down below in the description for that. What this application will allow us to do is to use frame generation on any GPU. So if you're someone that does not have a 4000 series GPU, you can use this scaling application to improve your frame rate by double or triple. All right, folks, that's going to finish us up for today. Let me know what your results are down below in the comments section. Post some before and afters as well as your system specs. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below as well. And if you enjoyed today's content, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my Flight Simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.